All right, it is that time once again, Tasty Tuesday with Telex. Thanks for stopping by for another short review, and uh, it's live. <laughs> and I decided that we're going to take a look at the Aaron, a new uh, bottle version, we'll say, of the 21-year-old. Um, it's still limited. Uh, there was 9,000... Uh, on the last run and 9,000, I believe on this run, but it's become part of their permanent core range from what I've gathered. Um, this is thankfully a uh, 46%, no chill filtering and no color, which is excellent on the craft. This is in the islands region, islands. Uh, this is not necessarily like a Highland Park or a Talisker, which are also islands distilleries. The islands are a bit, of a mishmash of different qualities. Some of them, uh, you know, this one and Talisker are known for like spices, um, but they also have qualities of a space side, like a lot of fruit, that type of thing too, uh, with this particular distillery. Um, and of course, Highland Park has the heather and some other different qualities. But anyway, uh, this one is uh, also X sherry casks. It doesn't talk about anything uh, regarding like X bourbon or uh, they didn't say how long they matured, you know, one from another, but I just know it's an X sherry casks. And this is a new uh, offering. We'll get to the, uh, the marketing and the box later, but let's take a look at the nose here and see what we get. A ton of fruit off the get go. Nice sweet fruit too, ripe. Um, apples and pears and some strawberries too in there. And then comes some darker notes like dark chocolate. Some really nice cereal grain quality in there. Uh, barley, menthol, like a, a spearmint. And it comes in with some citrus fruit too, lemons. Ooh, and some nice tobacco notes. And even some sweetness, like some toffee in there as well. Wow, a lot going on in the nose. Really nice and rich, balanced. Ah, I can nose it all day. <laughs> Let's go in for a little taste. Mm. Pleasantly, a medium mouth coat. Not overly, you know, heavy, uh, not a Klein Leash level, but still nice and sturdy. Ooh, wow, lots of oranges, melon fruit, like mangoes, watermelon even. Mm. Some nice um, cocoa beans, kind of a, a, not bitter per se, but a balanced cocoa bean kind of a flavor. Wow, a little spicy too. Ooh, like some uh, red chilies. A little bit of basil in there, too. Wow. And some leather. A slight smokiness, even though this is not a peated scotch. It definitely has a bit of a smoke level. I mean, it's low, but it's, it's, it's detectable. Mmm, wow. That's really good. Okay. Finish is, is still going too. Mm, cedar type wood. It's got, it's a bit apricot. It's got two different fruits going on that are kind of battling almost like an apricot, but also a plum, which is really weird. But good, it's different. A little bit of um, the oaky, you know. This, even though this isn't like ex bourbon cast, the, some, there's some oaky notes going on at, toward the end. Still nice, still apricot, still going on. It's, it's a, it's a. I consider this a long finish. I'd say medium to long. It's not overly dry either, which is nice. So far, hell of a dram, I have to say. Let's put a little drop and see what we get. I, I love the craft and uh, we'll talk about the uh, a drop or two actually. We'll do two drops. 
literally those drops and put the rest back in the old uh, bucket for uh, a later day. <laughs> 46% definitely should be able to handle a little bit of, uh, you know, Iska in the uh, glass. Ooh, it's already changing. Wow, that's different. <laughs> and it, it's not a bad way, it's just so different. I'm getting pencil shavings and white grapes <laughs> off the nose now. Some florals going on. And the cereal has become more of like a straw hay kind of a deal. I like it. I, I think I like it, the nose without the water more, but it's still interesting what you can get to change if you want. Let's see what the palette does here. Hmm. Spicier even than before. That's weird. Cinnamon. Wow. It's still red chili, but now it's more of like a Thai chili. It's it's definitely spicier. It's kinda it's it's nicely balanced with a lot of sweet sugary caramel with it. And it still has a, a white pepper kind of a kick. Hmm. Not as intense with the water versus without, but you still can get a bit of a spice bomb going on if you want it to be with a drop of two of water. Huh. Let's see how the finish goes. Interestingly, it makes it feel like a heavier mouth coat slightly with the water. It's a bit more waxy. Really nice ginger notes in there. And even more chocolatey on the finish with some leather still going on. There's absolutely no bitterness, which is really nice, um, I have to say. Um, even though there was that little tinge, uh, what was it, like the cocoa beans probably, that gave it um, a little bit of a an edge. It wasn't mineral, you know, minerality wasn't going on or, or overly bitterly, you know, it didn't have a lot of pith. Uh, thankfully, no grapefruit detected in this one, which usually is a bit of a turnoff for my own subjective palate. So, anyway, I tell you what, I think that I think they're, they're still putting out great juice here. And with this, I have to commend them because you know, if you've ever seen the old Twenty One, it's a bit different. It's a uh, it has their old last run style. It kind of fits in with that. Their new style is a bit is a bit. Um, more low key. I like the fact that they even put like you can't see it too well here in the light, but the, there's braille here underneath. It's raised, but they they definitely emphasize the non chill filtering, natural color. They give you like the longitude latitude of of where the distillery is, I believe. It has kind of a nice little design here. Um, you know, it's got some stamps and some markings, but they keep it pretty basic, and I really like that. I mean, it's got some really nice gleam, you know, to the side, and it has, you know, your typical information regarding, like, where they are and what they, you know, went through as far as the distillery and just a little bit of a introduction. But overall, I have to say, it's it's really, uh, I think it's a well-put-together uh, little package here, and they they... It's funny because a lot of people have been giving them hell recently about the uh, the basic packaging, but I have to I have to commend them on it. Actually, I think I'd rather I'd rather see a nice you know a nice just basic bottle like this that has a better craft to it than dealing with you know marketing you know something that doesn't have anything to do with the whiskey. If you want to market the whiskey, then I'm all for that. Don't market something that doesn't have anything to do with the whiskey. And I think that's where they did everything right here. I, I don't see an issue with it. And, it, you know, you might not like basic, but it's I'd rather than invest money in what's inside the glass than what's on the outside of the glass, you know, if they're going to invest a lot of money in, in all that. So with that said, I think we're looking at a 4.5 out of five. Uh, I, I really like this one. I like it better than the Ben Rock 21. And, um, 
this goes to show, even though, you know, Rachel Berry took four different cast maturations and uh, I know she was dealing with like virgin oak and some uh, red wine cast, some ex bourbon, and I th even some sherry or whatever. This is just straightforward, really good ex sherry cast. They're not, they're definitely well used. I mean, they're not used in, in as, as far as uh, what's the word for it, uh, overused. You know, they're not like a uh, faded, weak cast. These are actually really good. Um, so I think that uh, it's a home run to me, at least so far. I, I haven't tried any of their other new stuff yet. I have had Aaron uh, like a 16 from the past. It wasn't all that great. Uh, they have a new, I believe it was a 10, an 18, a 21. And they also have a few uh, NASs that they did. I'm not quite sure why they did the three NASs versus doing like more of a 12, 15 um mid-range but maybe it's probably because of cask uh, experimentation i'm gonna guess because i think these nas's are uh specific cask maturations that are more on the experimental um area so it's live review i can't come up with words all the time anyway thanks so much for stopping by i'm gonna look at this in more in depth with uh Mont muser uh, we're gonna start doing uh, joint reviews uh, together as well uh, at the same time. So this will be the first of that of type of series. I'll still do my short reviews first, but we're going to get together and, and go into all the fine details uh, here. So thanks for stopping by for now. We're going to start a new live review uh, here, a discussion after the fact. And please join us every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern for the short. And then right afterward, 10 minutes later or so, the long review after that. Salon Chava for now.